I'm Giselle and I'm from I'm an online tutor from EAOP and today I will put from UCSD and today I will give provide uh, talk about pollution for your AP environmental exam and pollution this section is a very important section so about 15% of your test so this is a big part of, of the AP environmental exam and then the first thing I will go over in pollution is air pollution so air pollution has primary and secondary pollutants and the major air pollutants are nitrogen, nitrogen dioxide, ozone, peroxyacyl nitrates which is abbreviated PAN and then there is sulfur dioxide and then suspended particulate matter which is PM10 and volatile organic compounds so basically there are different air pollu pollutants that the air causes and releases into the air so there's smog, there's two types of smog, there's industrial smog which is also called gray air smog. So this is when you see the power plants or you see a big factory, you see this like gray smoke coming out, that's industrial smog. And then there's six steps and then there's an overall formation, basically that at the end it forms nitrogen, the NH4, 2SO4. And then there's photochemical smog. And this is also called brown air smog, and it is catalyzed by UV radiation. And then the overall net equation for um, photochemical smog is NO plus VOCs plus O2 plus UV light, and it equals O3 plus PANS. And then right below is the photochemical smog, a picture of it, and then the industrial gray smog. Okay. Um, there's also acid deposition and then acid rain is used to describe several ways that acids fall out of the atmosphere so it can be due to sulfur dioxide or nitrogen oxide so it can be due to different things that make acid rain and then acid, acid depos deposition it has wet and dry different um, and then wet is acidic rain, fog, and snow, and dry is acidic gases and particles. So there's different types of the way acid can be deposited. And then the effects, and then it causes as acidification of lakes, acid shock, and health matters. So by uh, affecting the lakes, it affects the animals and kills off, and it can also give like rise to a lot of health matters. Okay. And then there's heat islands and temperature inversions. So basically what this means is that the urban heat islands occur in metropolitan areas, so areas that are like a city that is highly populated like New York and then it has, it makes it like warmer because you're around like all these um, buildings so it's up to 10 degrees Fahrenheit warmer and 30% rainfall. And so these high levels of pollution can lead to the greenhouse effect and this, it causes many negative natural causes to the environment and it causes temperature inversions between basically means the temperature goes up and the effect it increases pollution and increases health problems to many of the people okay and then there's indoor air pollution so there can be air pollution that in houses and so in indoor air pollutant levels may be 25 to 62 percent greater than outdoor level that is very large range that it can can be higher so it depends on how many pollutants you have and then the most common are mold bacteria carbon monoxide radon allergens formaldehyde asbestos tobacco so there's different forms but those are like the most common and then this affects this gives rise to many health problems because you're inside your house you're exposed to these and you can get like sick and then there's many ways to improve the air quality so there's the EPA's Acid Rain Program, the Clean Air Act, which is in 1963, and the Kyoto Protocol. So these are different acts or protocols that have been done to like improve the air quality inside your home. Okay, and the next part that we'll go over is noise pollution. So noise pollution, what well, noise pollution is, unwanted human-created sound that disrupts the environment. So basically, like loud cars or transportation services, there's there can be health effects like associated with these but mostly it's like hearing problems so if you're so used to so much noise you can like like it can later later lead to a problem and then it has control measures so there's noise barriers reducing vehicle speed and technology to pre prevent noise 
And there's also a noise control act that was to reduce the amount of noise that is being produced. Okay, and the next one is water pollution. So water pollution, it can originate from two sources. It's a point or a non-point source. So a point source occurs when harmful substances are emitted directly into body of water. So um, it's like when there's like there's a certain like the substances are just removed into the water that's a point source and a non-point source does, sources deliver pollutants indirectly through transport or environmental ex environmental change so point source is directly and non-point is like non-directly but it still like pollutes the water okay there's different sources of of water pollution the first one is air pollution which is mercury Sulfur dioxide, nitric oxides, and ammonia fall into water. And then there's chemicals, which it, from industrial and agricultural sources can cause water pollution. So this would be a form of point source because they're going directly into the water. And then there's a microbial, microbiological sources, which is disease causing microorganisms such as bacteria, viruses, and protozoa can result in swimmers getting sick and fish becoming contaminated. So different um, bacteria that are may that are that arise can cause this contamination of the water it can affect different the fish and like can get people sick and then there's mining and that exposes heavy metals and sulfur sulfur compounds and rainwater which transfer pollution and to fresh water supplies so there's also this is like the heavy metals can cause the pollution in the water and then there's also noise and because of the noise pollution, some animals find it harder to hunt or communicate. So this doesn't directly like affect the water pollution, but it does because the animals are being affected. Okay. Okay. So there is different sources of water. This is a continuation of different sources of water pollution. So there's also nutrients, which is phosphorus and nitrogen can lead to cultural eutrophication. And then later I'll explain what cultural eutrophication is. And then there's oxy oxygen depleting substances, so there's excessive biodegradable waste that ca can cause the oxygen, de oxygen depletion in receiving water, so less oxygen is coming into the waters. And then there's suspended matter, which is, which is toxic materials that can, ac can, accumulate, can accumulate the sediment. There's basically the toxic materials can accum accumulate in the sediment and it affects the organism throughout the food web because they're going to be eating toxic like sediment or toxic like the the plants are going to be toxic and there's thermal sources which is the heat reduces the ability of water to hold oxygen and cause death to organisms that cannot tolerate heat or low oxygen levels so basically this heat can cause uh, less oxygen and it affects the water and then the cold like how i said earlier i mentioned this earlier cultural eutrophication so this is a process whereby human activity increases the amount of nutrients entering surface waters. So this causes nitrates and phosphates. So this, the effects are increased algae and decreased oxygen decaying fish. So basically a lot of sediment is, um, is produced and a lot of algae. So not as many like fish and different like animals can live in the water. And right there I have a picture of it and the lake is pretty much covered in algae. And then there's ways to control the cultural eutrophication. And some ways are planting vegetation, application time, runoff feedlots, or biological controls. Okay. Okay, the, there's also groundwater pollution. So about 50% of people in the U.S. depend on groundwater for their water supplies. And then, so... And 60% of pollutants is injected into deep groundwater. So basically, the pollutants that are infected into the deep groundwater can affect the our supplies that we're trying to, like the water that we get. And so, like I said, it can it can contaminate the water. And it can look the aquifer is what collects the water. And once that's connect, that's once that's contaminated, it's really hard to replace. And there's there's different um, ways of maintaining water quali quality and pur water purification. Right here, I just put different the different methods, but later I'll provide the specific definition to each of these 
So there's absorption, which the contaminate, contaminants stick to the surface or granular or powered activated charcoal. So contaminants stick to these surfaces. And then there's disinfection, which is chlorine, chloramines, chloride dioxide, ozone, and UV, radi um, UV radiation. There is filtration, which removes clay, silt, natural organic ma matter, and precipitants from the treatment process. For filtration, filtration clarifies water and enhances the effectiveness of the disinfection. There's also flocculation sedimentation, which is a process that combines small particles into larger particles that then settle out in the water as sediment. Alum, iron salts, or synthetic organic polymers are generally used to promote, promote coagu coagulation. There's also ion exchange, which removes organic con constituents. It can be used to remove arsenic, chromium, excessive, excess fluoride, nitrates, radium, and uranium. So basically, these methods are different methods to, um, to purify the water. And so water, there's different water treatment rem remediation technologies that can also reduce the pollution in wa water. So there's abs adsorption and absorption. There's aeration, air stripping, bioreactors, constructed wetlands, deep well injection, enhanced bioremediation, -remedi fluid vapor extraction, granulated activated carbon, hot water stream flushing, in well air stripping, ion exchange, biodo -remedi remediation, remediation, and UV oxidation. So these are have different um, these are different like methods and like I'll provide along with the other information I'll provide the, the definitions for these but it's a, you should be able to be able to recognize these technologies and different technologies to improve the water treatment okay okay and then there's also sewage treatment the septic systems so the treatment incorporates physical chemical and biological processes to remove these contaminants so the primary treatment it reduces oils grease fats and coarse solids there is secondary treatment, which degrades substantially the biological content of the sewage derived from the human waste. And there's tertiary treatment, which the, it's the final stage to, rate the efflu to raise the effluent quality to, to standard required before it starts. So basically it goes through these three treatments, and the last one is the one to get it finally ready to be discharged. And then, so basically you have to make it like not as polluted and then these systems can can reduce the contaminants and remove them. Okay, and next section is solid waste. So, um, solid waste, so there's organic and ra radioactive, recyclable. So the organic are kitchen waste, vegetables, fruits, flowers, and, and fruits. I've mentioned fruits twice, sorry about that. And then those can be put back into the ground, they're organic. There's radioactive, which is hard to get rid of. It's spent fuel rods and smoke detectors. There's also recyclable, so you can recycle. And then there's paper, glass, metals, and some plastics. And there's soiled, which are ha hospital waste. And there's toxics, which are chemicals, paints, pesticides, etc. And right there, it shows like the different types of um, um, things that can be recycled, and it's trash can. And then disposal and reduction. So there's pros and cons to each. So um, there's pros and cons to burning and incineration or energy recovery from com compost composting, remanufacturing, detoxifying, export exporting, exporting land disposal, which is sanitary landfills, land disposal, which is open dump dump dumping, ocean dumping, recycling, and reuse. So on top there's a picture of recycling and then there's a the second one is a landfill which has all the trash and i will provide the the description to each the pros and cons to each it's pretty long but basically you have to know that each one does have its positives but there's also negatives to a lot of them like the dumping okay and that concludes our section of pollution um i will provide questions in later in the description Good luck studying and good luck on your AP exam.